So, I have this giant jar of kimchi here, which I'm gonna get into. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if I can, oh my gosh. And we're off. <laughs> <laughs> Today on this episode of Watch June Eat, we are eating pho. So yesterday Dan's mom and dad made us pho and they know that I love it so much that they gave me some to take home. So that is what I want to show you guys today. So this is a hot pot. Alright, take a look inside. This smells so amazing it's literally i'm not even joking guys i know i've said this before the best broth of my entire life it doesn't even compare to any other restaurants i've tried to go back to the restaurants that i thought i liked before and they were no good so yeah let's get into this i'm actually about to go work out soon so not eating a ton of noodles fun noodles comes like this they're actually fresh noodles and you only have to cook them for like two minutes. So, mix them around. Okay, I'm gonna need more noodles than that. Just kidding. So, fun noodles, it might look like a lot, but it's not that much. Okay, we're putting another handful in. Woo! I think it's a good pre-workout meal. You got some carbs, we got your protein. Smells amazing. Put the hot boiling soup on the noodles. Okay, we made it to the table. Just now I set up my camera and it told me it was out of batteries and it was so sad because I had everything set up but now I'm using my iPhone, hopefully it works. I might have to get up and tap the screen in a bit. But this is a setup of for pho. I'm getting all like, I'm salivating because this is so exciting for me. So when I first met Dan, he owned a gym and was a personal trainer like he is now. Um, and then he had a dream to start Ah, a pho restaurant, that might have gotten on my face, to start a pho restaurant. And so he did it. He um, opened up a pho restaurant in Diamond Bar area and um, it was amazing because I got to eat pho all the time. Oh, seriously, it's so beefy, it's so rich. Oh. Amazing, okay. So yeah, he owned a pho restaurant in Diamond Bar, um, which is very, very far away. Um, if you guys know where it is, it's east, like inland, so. Mm. I need to put my hair up for this. So, pho restaurant, it's called Chop Shop. And he had these amazing egg rolls too. That was his mom's recipe. And I would eat that pretty much every day. Egg rolls and pho every day. But good thing we worked out a lot still. There was an LA Fitness right down the street. Mm. I wish I had a napkin. I didn't bring a napkin. So one thing that we learned in Diamond Bar there are a lot of Korean people there. So they would always ask for onions on the side and then they would put hoisin and sriracha and lime. I don't have lime right now. But we started eating it like that because they kept ordering it like that, sliced onions, okay? And then once we started, we could not stop. It cuts the richness of the meat. Mm. 
gives a little crunch. And yeah. But, so as you guys know, I order groceries from Milk and Eggs. And I wanted to get kimchi. And I was like, okay, this is a $20 jar of kimchi. The picture looked normal. A $20 jar of kimchi. It's kind of expensive, but I mean, maybe it's something that they don't source. Although they have a lot of Asian food on Milk and Eggs. But, so I ordered the, the jar of kimchi. And guess what came? Insane. So, I have this giant jar of kimchi here, which I'm gonna get into. Oh my gosh. If I can't, oh my gosh. This is so sad if I can't open this. I'm about to go to the gym after I eat this. Okay, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna, I need another pair of chopsticks and I need to make sure my phone's working, so hang tight. Okay, I'm back. Got a new pair of chopsticks. I don't wanna put these in there. The brand is Cosmos Kimchi. I don't know, but this is just like the largest jar of kimchi I've ever seen. And Dan's restaurant actually used to serve kimchi too. It was homemade kimchi and I would love to eat it with my pho. So this is reminiscent right now. Woo! Smells like kimchi. This is taking up a lot of space in my fridge. I wonder how long it'll take me to eat this. Okay. All right, let's get back to it. So yeah, Chop Shop. Uh, Dan sold Chop Shop, hmm, I think like two years ago actually. I would always go there to help. I would serve there. I would be back in the kitchen. I don't know. It was a fun time because Dan and I got to spend a lot of time together. Mmm. Wow. Eating kimchi with pho really brings back memories from Chop Shop. Because I haven't done that. I mean, they don't have it at regular pho restaurants, so. They only have the onions on the side. You guys see closely. Mmm. I want to show you guys the pho closely. <laughs> yeah. Rice noodle. So I'd eat this every single day, pretty much, um, whenever I was there, which was often. And then we'd go work out right after. So I'm just kind of replaying our lives then. Uh, rice noodles actually digest super fast, so it's not that big of a deal. Mm. The way I eat pho is that I put it, instead of, well, I do both. I slurp, but then I also like to put it in the spoon because I like to drink it, drink the soup with the noodles. So I put it in my spoon and then I put, let's put kimchi, kimchi here. Some sauce, hoisin sauce and sriracha, staples for pho. And then I get the soup. Mmm. I love it. This is a piece of flank. Dan's dad makes this. It's so tender, so yummy. And it's like, when it comes from home, you know that it's made with love, it's clean, it's high quality ingredients. Because there's some pho restaurants for sure that serve super low grade meat. And you can tell when you go there. But I love that at Chop Shop everything was super high quality. Oh, the tripe there was so good. Super clean. His dad had this special way of making it. Mm. And then Dan's mom puts green onion butts in here too. There's beef balls, bao ying. Mm. I love 
Eating pho is something crunchy now. Dan and I can't eat pho without the onions. And now, there's a whole jar of this. So crazy. Mm. A lot of you guys requested that I eat pho for my next video. So here it is. Do you have favorite pho places that you go to? Whatever city you're in, let me know what your favorite pho spot is. I grew up in San Francisco where um, most of the Vietnamese people in the Bay Area are in the South Bay, in the San Jose area. But I grew up in San Francisco, so I honestly didn't have very Viet many Vietnamese friends. Um, but I eat pho all the time. I eat pho all the time out at restaurants because there are a ha good handful of Vietnamese restaurants in San Francisco. But never had homemade pho until Dan. Um, do you guys like bean sprouts in your pho? I, I mean, I like them, but if I don't have them, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna ruin my meal for sure. Mm. Honestly, sometimes I think that the bean sprouts get in the way of the noodles. Yeah. I need sauce on my nudes. Connected to Bluetooth. My gosh, Alexa. Alexa randomly talks to me every now and then. Mmm. There's something about rice noodles. Rice noodles do get soft though, so they're not as chewy as the meal goes on because it soaks up all the soup. Mmm. And I want to talk about this meat. So, crazy. Usually, our pho restaurants, they have rare steak where they slice it super thin. But Dan's dad does it where he uses a knife and he chops at it. And he it's basically like tenderized chunks of meat. It's so good. Mm. It's so tender. I think it's better than the rare meat. Um, well, it was rare to begin with when I put it into the bowl, but I think it's better than the sliced meat in my personal preference. Have you guys seen the pho challenge before? It's crazy. The pho challenge. Hold on, I have a feeling my phone might have like stop recording. Hang on. Let me check. All right, the phone is still working. I am almost done and the camera is still charging. Okay, yes, back to what I was saying. The pho challenge. It's two pounds of meat. Yeah, two pounds of meat, two pounds of noodles, and a big old bowl of broth. Like, by big, I mean like, like you could bathe the baby in that bowl. I've never tried it personally. I love pho, but I don't know how far I would get. Um, I wonder if Dan could do it. I kind of want to take him to go try. Speaking of bowls, this bowl is actually from Chop Shop. And so are these chopsticks. So, it's a Chop Shop kind of day. Mm. The restaurant would close every day from three to five. Um, during that time, um, we would go rent inventory. Dan was working so, so, so hard back then. You think that he's working hard now? Back then it was crazy. Um, so, rent inventory, and then we'd go get a quick workout. We'd always have to go get a quick workout or else we just felt sluggish and we wanted to make the, the most use of our day. 
I can't decide. I haven't eaten onions and kimchi side by side for a while. Can't decide which one I like better. I think I might like onions better. This jar still seriously cracks me up. Mm. I'll have you guys know, this is breakfast. Um, breakfast and then Dan's training. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the gym after with him. Mmm. I'm almost done. My intervals today are gonna be super easy, I can already tell you. Whenever I eat carb low before my intervals, super easy. Am I super easy? I mean, easier than normal. I've been doing our transform fitness intervals for over four years. Over four years, and <laughs> to this day, it's still not easy. But when I said super easy, I just mean like easier than normal. A lot of you guys ask how we stay fit and eat all the food that we do. Dan and I started a online training program recently. It's called Transform Fitness. So if you guys have any interest in that or any questions, let me know. Um, I'll put the email down below. It's been seriously life-changing since meeting Dan because he's taught me ways to work out that I wasn't working out before. I've always been active, always playing sports my whole life, um, but I was bulking. Like, always had a lot of bulky muscle on me and never was really able to lean out. When I was younger, excuse me, when I was younger, um, up until college, eh, up until like junior year of high school, senior year, okay, maybe college, I was pretty lean, um, minus elementary school when I was a little bit chubby. But in high school, I actually leaned out and lost my baby fat. But then when I got to college, it was like game over. We were eating so much. Definitely gained like freshman 20. Mm. Had ice cream at every single meal. You guys. So if you don't know what kimchi is, it's fermented cabbage and it's actually like alive. Cause it's, there's probiotics in here and they're bubbling. Crazy. Sorry, very distracted. But yeah, so. I gained freshman 20 when I went to college, and then I never was able to get it off. And then I went to law school. Um, I was always working out, trying to lean out, always on a diet, tried every single diet. I'm gonna talk more about this in another video in depth, about my journey, my fitness journey, my body's journey. Um, Long story short, right now, since meeting Dan, I lost 20 pounds. But I'm eating more than I was, and like the sense of food freedom has been super uh, liberating, to say the least. Okay, I just finished. Mm. Mm. One more meatball. Mmm. They're a little bit crunchy, which is yummy. All right, folks. Whoa, I don't know how to spill it. I think you can see, can you see? But anyways, finished and I'm gonna go put my hair up properly, wash my face, get some, no, I'm wearing, I'm wearing my leggings already, get my shoes on, and then head to the gym. Mm, maybe do leg day today, I haven't done legs in a while. So, transform finished intervals, and then leg day. We'll see what Dan's working out, maybe I'll join whatever he's doing too. 
All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Watch June Eat. I'll see you guys next time. Please subscribe, like, comment below, and tell me what you guys want to see next, what you guys like what I'm doing, what you want to see more of. I'd love to hear your feedback since this is a new series. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>